that's meant to be multiplied. Yeah. Okay, verse 16. <clears throat> From verse 16. Yeah. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. Continue. 17. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also in 18. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and did his Lord's money. Okay. So a talent is to be multiplied. Mm -hmm. Now, take note in here, going back to verse 16, this. Take note that, um, well, no, I think it was in verse 14, uh, in verse 14 but it doesn't matter. Oh. Talent is being received or uh, given by the Lord. You don't ask for talent. I could hardly believe this because that uh, uh, in the past I, I thought that talents should be asked. But then again, in the parable of talents, the Lord gave talents. He did not ask. The servants did not ask. The Lord gave talents and the servants received. In received. verse 16, received the talents. So a talent, not be, not. Mm, mm, don't ask for the talents, is given to us by the Lord and should be cherished, should be used, should be improved, should be increased, should be expanded, should be extended to others because when that talent, raw talent becomes ripe, then it becomes your ministry, it becomes your gifting. And so Paul was reminding Timothy in first. Timothy 4.14 that saying that do not neglect the spiritual gift you have received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church lay their hands on you. Give your complete attention to these matters. Give your full attention to the giftings yeah. or to the talents that the Lord has given you. Throw yourself into it. Can you imagine that? Imagine that? Throw yourself into it. Meaning Give your full weight into it. So that when you are serving the Lord, you don't do it just to impress people or to impress your girlfriends or boyfriends or whoever, but you throw in yourself into it. Amen. Because you are trying to please the Lord, not me, not the pastor, not the leaders, not the congregation, not the community, but the Lord can see our hearts. So Paul said, throw yourself into your tasks. So that everyone will see you progress. So that everyone will see you progress. And when you are throwing in yourself that the gift that the Lord is giving you, it means you are multiplying your talents because you are developing it, you are expanding it, you are using it, and you are cherishing it, you are developing it. Meaning, it's multiplying. Last way. I exhorted about the types of offerings. I, I remember that I said that God is, God is not a God of division, division and subtraction. He is a God of multiplication and addition. So that God loves multiplying. Yeah. Love God's adding. Yeah. So if we are created under the image of God, and God wants us to be like Him, then let us multiply in talents. Let us multiply. Let us develop the giftings that the Lord has given us because we need to increase the talent. Can I brag for a while? Modesty aside. Okay? Sure. I'm not bragging really. I'm I'm bragging about scriptures now. I'm bragging. I'm boasting for the Lord. I'm boasting for the Lord. Okay? Right. I told you this before. I started as a Christian and with the ministry, with the joy in my heart, playing the triangle in the music ministry, promoting the girl baby to the tambourine. And then my pastor then, already then, my pastor then saw the, ta the talent in me and uh, assigned me to be one of the young professional Bible uh, Sunday school teachers. Mm -hmm. I had the experience of that. But I was really joy because he, he could see that I had the talent and really teach it is my gift because I love the party management and all those things. And you know what? Because I'm trying to increase the gifting dignity that the Lord has given me. And two months after I got saved, I went to the Bible College at Foursquare and I 
is part of the church in the Philippines, in Pateros, where I live and went to house house and sharing the word of God there. And those things. I never stop. I never stop <clears throat> to increase the talent that the Lord has given me. Yeah. And He has rewarded me, of course, because aside from the triangle player and the tablet player, I was promoted there just as a deacon, good thing. Later on, as an elder, good thing. Yeah. Later on, as one of the elders, Good thing. And then I was a Christian director. Good thing. And when I went to Jacob Garcia, Abigail wasn't born yet. I pioneered the church there. And even up to now, it is still there. And so alive for many years already. Because I am giving myself to the Lord. I just don't like serving the Lord with mm, good enough. You know, I've been repeating that, right? Because I want people to see that when you are serving the Lord, with those talents that has given you, you have to give your best. Amen. You have to multiply it. That's you have to develop it. And do it with excellence. Not just... Mm, that is excellent. That is the number one legacy I'd like to give you. So that when I'm not around anymore, I'm not prophesying. I'm not prophesying. I don't know. That's in my heart. When I'm not around anymore, you will remember the word excellence uh, yeah. did not come from me. But I was using the word excellence for the service of God. Amen. 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 When you give something to the Lord, do your best. Yeah, best. Give 100%. Multiply it to another 100%. 5 becomes 10, 2 becomes 4, 1 becomes 1. You won't be happy. You won't be happy. Yeah. So, let's be excellent in serving the Lord. Now, in verses 19, from verses 19 to 30. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and set their accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five pa other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to them, Well done. Good and faithful servant, you were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's the key word there. There is joy in serving the Lord. A talent is to be accounted for, for reward. And there should be joy within our heart. So enter into the joy of your Lord. I'm not saying that when you are serving the Lord, whether you are a pastor or what, then you will not be suffering persecutions or any difficulty or any problems. I'm not saying that. But in spite of that, yeah. in spite of all those hurdles, in spite of those things that are blocking your way to serve the Lord, then when you are able to breathe in, oh, Lord, I'm ready again. There is no joy in serving the Lord. Continue serving that, yeah. right? So some people may be asking me, why are you still pastor me? And then my son, my kids will say, that you're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you still want to pastor me? My heart, what can I do? I have a calling. That's what the Lord has given me. What can I do? I find joy in discipling me. I find joy in sharing, preaching the word of God. I find joy in teaching the word of God. But not every gifts are mine. I cannot do what God is doing, you know. He's so warm and he can make you cry by sharing the word of God. I cannot do that. Maybe if I teach you, I can make you cry. <laughs> but I cannot do that too. Praise God. Let's be very gentle. Your time. 
talent in the ground. Lord, there you have what is yours. Maybe you must see the ground, all right? Look, I'm touch. <laughs> yes, well, I did go back up. Still one, I'm giving it back to you. But this Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I went where I, 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 I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers at least, and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. The five multiplied the two, ten talents. For to everyone who has more will be given, and he will have it in abundance, we, and will have abundance. But from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprof unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, there will be weeping and gnashing of it. That is a very exaggerated mm. illustration of the Lord. For those people who are not using their talents, for those people who are in the shy, getting out of their shell mm. to be to serve the Lord. Mm. Okay? Mm. I'm not condemning anyone. Yeah. I'm trying to encourage yeah. each Amen. one to do their best okay. for the Lord. But then the Lord, God is a God of reward, alright? Yeah. When you do something, He sees your heart. Okay? Pastors do not see your heart. I mean, literally. But the Lord can see literally your heart and spiritually and figuratively speaking. So that when the Lord knows your faithfulness to the talent He has given you or talents He has given you, then there are rewards aside from joy that He has given one. So I would say then, therefore, that no one really is necessary or indispensable in the kingdom of God. You know what? If you are not using your talent, the Lord will grab your talent, the one talent, and give it to the one who has many, who has ten already, who has four already. Now let's go to the scriptures. Next scriptures are uh, that's in Luke. Jesus gave this parable. Parable of um, unbarren fig tree. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that you can cut it down. Right. So the message of the Lord is the Lord is trying to do an auditing of what we of what we receive from Him. Now, to finish this off, I'd like to make a paraphrase translation of these verses. Jesus has a church planted in his confidence. And he visits every Sunday seeking if the members are bearing enough fruit. Then he said to the two pastors, look. For 10 months now, I always come seeking if your members have multiplied the talents I have given them. Some are not serving me to their full potential because they depend too much on the lady who went back to the Philippines for good. Sounds familiar, isn't it? I would recommend to cut down those lazy and shy members who hesitate to come out of their shell. But Pastor G, whoever he is, answered and said to him, Sir, that it until 2015. My co-worker, Pastor M, I don't know that guy, Pastor M and I will dig the soil deeper around them, fertilize them, and see how they will grow. And if they bear fruit, well, but if not, after 2015, after that, you can cut it 